Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the naming of an MP who was arrested on suspicion of serious offences over a year ago but until today has been unnamed. We knew that they'd agreed not to attend Parliament but they're still in a position of trust and authority in their own constituency and it begs the question, where is the balance of rights when it comes to a case like this? But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So the Sunday Times has named Conservative MP Andrew Rosendell as the Tory MP under investigation for sexual offences for several years, but who was first arrested over a year ago. Now, it has to be said that given that the investigation has been going on for such a long time and that he's had his bail extended multiple times and no charges have been brought as yet. Uh, so I'm going to look at this from the point of view of someone who must be presumed innocent at this stage, but it still represents a real dilemma of where duties of care lie, where you cannot know whether the person really is innocent or not. See, first of all, let us remember that what caused Tory MPs to finally topple Boris Johnson was his placing a known sex pest in charge of listening to their accusations of sexual harassment. They didn't like that. Yet these same Conservative MPs are content, it would appear, for someone to be accused of serious offences and be out and about in their constituency, potentially dealing with sensitive matters for vulnerable people without anyone knowing. And I think there is a dilemma here. Often when people talk about a dilemma, what they actually mean is, uh, oh, I can't decide between doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing that I actually really want to do. No, I think this is a genuine dilemma in terms of how protecting one person who may be innocent jeopardises other innocent people if it turns out they're actually not innocent at all. When the arrest was made, the Conservative Chief Whip, who was Chris Heaton Harris at the time, asked Rosendale to stay away from the parliamentary estate, which they agreed to do. Now, here's where the first problem occurs. Because people knew that a Tory MP in his 50s was arrested. I well remember it at the time. That was what we knew. It was a Tory MP in his 50s uh, was arrested for sexual offences. So inevitably then people started speculating about all the male Tory MPs in their 50s that it could have been. Was that fair on the others? especially if they hadn't spoken in a debate or registered a vote for a few weeks, because the other thing was we also knew that they were staying away from Parliament. Well, there were several Tory MPs in their 50s who, at, over a period of a few weeks, had not spoken in a debate or registered a vote. So they then came under suspicion. After a while, although Rosendell has only been named now, if you wanted to find out, you would have found out by now because you would point out the only MP who in over a year hadn't attended Parliament that wasn't Nadine Doris. However, because he hadn't been until now named, anyone who wasn't carrying out their own detective work, which would be basically almost everyone in the country, including his constituency, nobody would have known there was anything untoward going on. He's even been selected as the party's candidate for the election without anyone taking part in the vote, knowing that he was even being investigated. In the Times article, there are all sorts of quotes giving uh, defending Rosendell's rights, given that he hasn't been charged and all that. But first of all, you'd say, well, why did the party not put that candidacy, you know, until later? Why didn't they wait? But although I have every sympathy for Rosendell himself, if he's innocent... I would just point out a few things. First, people are named in the media all the time for being arrested. There are other professions where being arrested for something like this means you are not going to be doing that job. Lots of public figures would be named and have been named in the past and have been suspended. Why would it be different for an MP? Second, what about the rights of vulnerable people who might go to Rosendell as their MP and discuss very sensitive matters? Third, what about the rights of those fighting for their party ahead of an election where the national leadership is deeply unpopular? I mean, put yourself in their shoes. You know, so you're, you support whatever party you support and you've gone along to a meeting and you have, you know, unanimously agreed that this candidate should be your candidate. Everyone loves them or they happen to be the sitting MP in this case. And then you later find out that you were bounced into supporting that candidacy because you were deliberately kept ignorant of the fact that they're being investigated for serious offences. 
And that's going to have a negative impact on the general election campaign. It's not about what you think about that candidate. It's about what you think about their chances now. Because people were making a decision whilst being kept deliberately ignorant of something which may have reasonably caused them to make a different decision. And as I say, never mind Rosendale's rights to be the candidate if he's innocent. I've said it enough times of Labour recently. I'll say it of the Conservatives. Nobody has a right to be a party candidate. If you want, if you want to be a candidate, stand as an independent. If a prospective candidate might bring with them baggage which damages the party's reputation, even if they did nothing wrong, if it's unwarranted, they should accept that the most important thing is the party. That's why you're in the party. You put the party first. And you, may ac you will accept that the party may want to appoint someone who won't put off voters. Because this doesn't just harm the Tories in this constituency. I haven't actually checked. It may be a super safe constituency, in which case they've got nothing to worry about. But it affects them nationally in marginal. This affects Tory MPs in marginals because they've basically covered it up. It doesn't matter that it was covered up by, you know, a couple of very senior members of the Tory party and the rest of the MPs. The rest of the MPs actually will have known, of course. But the Tory party's covered this up. They've covered it up. And, and people will see that. People in marginal constituencies will see that. And the right to anonymity, as I say, that cuts no ice because you see stories of famous people being arrested for both serious and minor offences all the time. We know that anonymity in these cases is not a thing. The public knows it's not a thing because they can read about arrests all the time. Where's the anonymity there? If the media want to, to publicise your arrest, they will publicise your arrest. Unless, of course, there's an injunction. Another point that was brought up in the article was to note that if he'd been suspended that his constituency would not have representation. Oh, we're actually doing... Think of the constituents. Will nobody think of the constituents? Well, the thing is, he, it doesn't have representation now. Not attending Parliament means he gets to say nothing in debates or vote. Yes, he can still submit written questions, and indeed has, but the major representation is in speaking and voting. Of course, there is a solution. It's the same solution to a whole range of problems, really. Proportional representation lumped together current constituencies are between six to eight MPs. And if one is suspended, the region still has multiple MPs you can go to. You have a system, a rotor system, to make sure surgeries take place in all the different bits of it on a, on a certain basis. Um, for those who don't get on with email and want personal cons consultancies, and also a system whereby if an MP is arrested for certain offences, they are automatically suspended until cleared. Nothing to do with the party system, automatic. Because when it comes to sexual offences in particular, there is a serious and deep-rooted problem in Parliament and it needs dealing with. And I will say it's a problem for Parliament. I know that almost all of these cases, and this one's no exception, tend to involve Conservative MPs. So when we think about this, we automatically... You know, like when someone says to you, oh, uh, an MP has been investigated for sexual offences, you immediately think about a Tory MP, don't you? But it, they don't have a monopoly. You know, the party system is inherently incapable of dealing with it properly. There needs to be statutory systems outside of the party system. The party can only be trusted to impose party discipline. That's fine. That's on them. Anything else like this, when it comes to, you know, what the public would expect, the party system cannot be trusted. It needs to be independent. In fact, the article notes that there is a proposal to automatically ban MPs investigate for crimes until an expert panel carries out a risk assessment and clears them. But the government won't say if MPs will be allowed to vote on the proposal. No, of course not. In other words, the Tory government want to stop MPs being able to vote on it, but they also want to avoid outright blocking it because they know how that's going to look. Because people will inevitably go, well, why, why are you opposed this? This sounds eminently sensible to me. But I will just finish by saying, even if Rosendell is innocent, an MP is in a position to cause people serious harm should they be minded to do so. We would be absolutely aghast as a nation if it turned out, and it has turned out this in the past, but if it turned out a police officer was allowed to remain on duty after being investigated for something like this. Same for a teacher. Why should we be okay with it for someone in an even greater position of authority? But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.